What's going on, everybody? It's Wednesday night, man. That's one thing and one thing only. Spotlight 39 Live with Rob and Zach. That's right. The the podcast where we recap all the big games. We preview all the big games. We have special guests from coaches, student athletes. Look, you don't want to miss it. If you missed it in the past, we've had guests like Chris Henry Jr. from Modern Day. We've had Brady Hart from Coco, the Michigan commit quarterback. Noah Grubbs committed to Notre Dame. Uh, let's see. We had Big Tank Carrington from Bishop Gorman. Uh, the list goes on and on. The point being, make sure you tap in, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification so you don't miss a show every single Wednesday night, 8 p.m. So before we get the show started, Zach, we got to thank our, our sponsors, man. And I'm going to get it right this time. It is I Am Power Energy, as well as the Great White Premium Apparel. Check out the website, greatwhite.shop. We appreciate them for being sponsors this season. And, of course, you got to check out the 39 Hearts Foundation. It is the reason why Spotlight 39 exists. It's the why behind everything we do. So all that out the way, Zach, man, how are you feeling? We've had some big games this season. This week was no different. We had some big matchups. Um, any upsets? Anything, you know, that, that kind of stood out to you before we, we kick off the recaps? Yeah, uh, last week was kind of the first big week. We didn't see a lot of crazy upsets. I was kind of surprised Santa Margarita went down, but outside of that, uh, yeah, not too many upsets. This week, I feel like it's a little more lighter when it comes to big-time games, but uh, we still got a few juicy ones for sure. Look, and juicy it is. So let's kick it off with, uh, you know, somebody I think we've talked about pretty much every week because they play powerhouse programs most every week. So let's talk about this big – Miami Central, American Heritage, South Florida showdown. What did you see from this game? And then, uh, you know, once we recap it, man, we're going to have a special guest. So what did you see from this game while I was on the sidelines at American – I mean, uh, uh, St. Joe's Prep at Good Council, man. I'll talk about that one briefly, even though we're not recapping it. Uh, heck of a game. You know, big plays on both sides of the ball. Good Council, obviously. You know, they're a young program. They lost a lot of, you know, young men. Um, but Fahim, the lean – uh, hopefully, I did not kill the, the last name. He is a monster, monster, yeah. pure monster. That dude is a, a ball hawk everywhere. Uh, so that's what I got on that game, man. Check out the highlights. It's on the YouTube channel. Uh, but let's talk about the American Heritage game, man. What did you see from, from this game? American Heritage went down. I think we both picked them to win, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but talk to me here. Yeah, I mean, this game, it was great quarterback play you know dia bell played great in the loss he threw for three touchdowns uh he ran for another score he he played outstanding anthony mcqueen had a great game junior quarterback for miami central uh, yeah heritage jumped out to an early 14 nothing lead it was looking like hey the patriots are going to get a big win here then central reeled off some unanswered points and they held on for that 35 32 win but yeah central did a good job defensively too they're able to get pressure on dia bell a few times that kind of proved to be the difference but uh, you know we're going to be talking to Dia Bell here soon. I think he'll tell you the same thing. Games like this are going to help him tremendously. Heritage, that is, when it comes to playoff football. These are the type of games you want to play in because you've already been through that adversity and it won't be something new once you get into the winner go home situation. Yeah, so, you know, with this, they, they're now two and three. Um, you know, the record definitely doesn't reflect who they, they are as a program. I mean, they're, they're locked and loaded. Um, these games could have gone either way pretty much every week, you know, for, yeah. for the losses, they were, right? They were in the Milton game. They were in the Chaminade Madonna game, and they were in this game too. So, you know, you could potentially looking at this team being 5-0 and and ranked in the top five. We're now, you know, they're 2-3, they're and three, but I think it'll be hard to find any team in the country that's a better three-loss team than American Heritage. Yeah, and I definitely don't disagree there. So where do you see American Heritage – going the rest of the year i mean they still have uh you know a small slate of games that they got to get through to get to those playoffs and potentially championship yeah they got plantation this week i i believe they're undefeated they're four and oh i'd expect heritage to win that game uh, by a couple of touchdowns and then they got norland after that and then they end the regular season against st thomas aquinas so if they can run the table and then beat st thomas aquinas who's ranked at number nine in the max prep stop 25 you'll see Heritage jump back in the rankings right before the playoffs start. And I think that's a very doable, you know, possibility. TBD, we shall see. Um, and then Miami Central, you know, they, they kind of started, you know, with the, the loss, right? But now we've gone 4-0 since then. You know, what are we seeing from them? They're only getting better as the weeks go on. 
where do they they finish out the season? Yeah, that was just a tough season opener against Lakeland. They just could not get the offense going. But you've seen the Rockets turn into a better team with Anthony McQueen at quarterback. He didn't play in that first game. So you've seen the Rockets really establish a great offense. They can run the ball well. Nashawn Montgomery, a stud 2025 Florida commit at wide receiver. You know, Khalil Sterling, another big-time guy at wide receiver. They're loaded in the receiver room. So uh, Miami Central's got Northwestern here coming up. I, I'd expect that to be a, a, a pretty big game. You know, Northwestern's lost a couple of nail biters, but that's one of the best rivalries in the country, so I can't wait for that one. But, yeah, Rockets are playing – great football and they're continuing to get better every single week. Yeah. So that, that Northwestern, that one's definitely marked. I'm sure we'll talk about that one as one of the big games of the week, man. But that's the, that's the recap. We can't just stop with the recap. Let's go ahead and bring on our first guest, man. Let's bring on QB one DFL. All right. So Zach and I just got done recapping that big time American heritage, Miami central game from Friday night. Didn't necessarily go the way my guy Dia wanted it to go, but look, we couldn't get out of here without bringing him on. This is QB1, your Texas commit, Dia Bell, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely, man. So, look, let's just, you know, let's get to it. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about the gauntlet that you've already run through in this very short season already. You you play some powerhouse contenders pretty much week in, week after, you know, week after week. Talk to me about how your season started. You know, talk to me about the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, you know, obviously the record doesn't reflect, you know, what you wanted to, nor does it really reflect uh, the talent that you guys have. Um, like I said, you guys have just been playing some really, really good programs um, that could win, you know, any given night. So talk to me about the start of your season, and then we'll, you know, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, our record definitely doesn't show the type of guys we have on our team and the and what we wanted to show, but um... – for that to say, we put we our schedule probably has five teams that are going to play in state championship games down the line. So um, we wanted to have adversity as early as we possibly could, um, so that when it comes time in the in the playoff games, we're as we're as ready as possible for all the situations thrown at us. Um, but I feel like all those teams that that we've lost to are, are really good teams, and we just kind of let it slip away from us when we when we shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, speaking so, of that, too, go ahead. I, I just got to ask, with those, the three losses you're talking about against, you know, Georgia Powerhouse Milton, who's ranked number three in the country, and then last week against Miami Central, who's getting healthy, a, a way better team with Anthony McQueen at quarterback, and then also that Shamanon Madonna loss. Out of those three opponents, who would you say is the best team, though? Um, they're all great teams. They're all respectively different in their own ways. Um for me, I feel like that Milton team is just is just a very stacked team, a very old team, a very well coached team, um, and I feel like obviously their ranking kind of shows where that where they're where they're at right now, which is I think so top five. Um, but so I feel like that was probably that was probably the hardest game. But um, all those teams in their in their respective realms are very good teams, and uh, ended up coming out on top of us. But um, we we shouldn't have let that happen. Hey, Zach, real quick, I'm gonna just going to jump in there, man, just because I got to witness that Milton game in person. Um, you know, I, I got to see you last year. I came down to the Broward Showcase, and I seen you last year, and I was like, holy hell, like, this young man is special. This young man, he's going to have a heck of a season and a heck of a career, and you were only getting better each and every week. So, you know, as I followed you, I watched the progression, and then this off season, you just kind of skyrocketed, right? Uh, you mm -hmm. come in, and then boom. You know, I come, I'm at the showcase again. You're playing number three, now ranked number three. I think they were in the top ten early in the season. Um, but now they're ranked number three, you know, powerhouse Milton. And, you know, it was a heck of a game. I mean, it's on ESPN. So all the, you know, all the spotlight is on you and in, in your program in South Florida. And, you know, they squeak out a, a very tight, hard-fought game. Uh, so, you know, I just had to throw that out there. You guys, you know, played a heck of a game. Milton played a heck of a game. And I think, you know – that helped mold you, like you said, you know, to get you through that, you know, those adverse situations to better prepare you for the playoffs when it really matters. And, you know, I think that that did just that. So what do you got for him, Zach, uh, you know, outside of the first couple of games? Because he's he's ran the gauntlet already, but, you know, it's not over yet. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to some, you know, games remaining on the schedule, I just want to say you had a great sophomore year, but the leap you took from your sophomore year to junior year 
has been outstanding. You've proven yourself to be where you're ranked on 24 seven sports. I think you're the number three quarterback in 2026 number ranked prospect in the state of Florida. So what are some things that you took from your sophomore year though, that helped you develop into the quarterback you've been playing against elite competition so far through five games this season? Uh, yeah, for sure. I feel like uh, that sophomore year was a big year for me for just getting experience in general. Uh, first year starting, um, getting some games under my belt, getting some experience under my belt, get more comfortable with the game, uh, kind of let it settle down for me. And I feel like this year I've just been able to be as calm as possible and be the leader that that I wanted to be my sophomore year that, that I wasn't able to be. Um, but I, I feel like the game's kind of slowed down for me now. Um, I kind of have a sort of freedom uh, about me now that I that I know what I'm doing more. Um, so I feel like that sophomore year was was very much needed for me. Yeah, the the growth, like I said, I mean, witnessing last year to this year, you know, was was remarkable, man. So, you know, wow, we just had a little blank, but uh, nonetheless, you know, um, let's let's just continue the journey, right? Let's talk about the rest of the season. You still got a handful of games, you know, that are very notable. Um, you know, what are we going to see from you in the rest of your, your team? I mean, obviously, you know, you're surrounded by great talent, but what are we going to see from you specifically uh, for the rest of the season or what can we expect to see from you? Um, I mean, for me, I'm just trying to get better day by day, week by week, um, learn from mistakes that may have happened in, in the past games um, and just be better and more prepared for the future. I mean, we have a bunch of bunch of good games coming up in, in teams like New Orleans and St. Thomas. So, just learning from the games uh, that we've had and the experiences we've been through and just getting better from them is, is some big for me so that I'm, I'm more prepared to have other guys around me prepare for moments like those. Yeah. So, Hey, I know Zach's itching to, to talk about Texas and the commitment and we're going to get there, but you brought up a good point that I, I, I definitely have to, to bring up and that's the teammates. Obviously, you know, we know of the star ranked, powerhouse, you know, ranking guys that you've got, you know, we got Tony, we got Lewis, but who are some guys that are maybe under the radar that you, you know, you can shout out and help them gain that much more exposure, you know, and hopefully get them that, uh, you know, that opportunity to be blessed similar to you guys. Oh, for sure. I feel like uh, our entire offensive group um, are all hardworking, very great individuals and on top of that, great football players. So, I mean, guys like uh, Jamar Denson, uh, Jafar Koji Noel, two other receivers that are in that receiver group. Um, who else? We got uh, my left tackle, Dane, right tackle, Ryan, uh, center slash guard, Ben Diaz, other guard, Aiden Hartnett, Teddy Welch. I mean, uh, across the board, I feel like we have a great group. Um, and I feel like that's kind of been expressed with the amount of points we've been averaging each game. Um, and I feel like that's only going to get better from here and then to the rest of the season, just growing with those guys because some of those guys are transfers. So um, I'd say that everybody on the offensive, offensive side of the ball is very talented as well as our defense. Um, and so those are a bunch of names that I'd, I'd put in there. I love yeah, it, man. Yeah, hey, I got I, I to gotta, I gotta ask you this too, man. I, you got Malachi Tony and Brandon Bennett headlining that receiver group. What's it like getting to play with those two dudes? Oh, it's great. Um, Malachi, uh, being being a quarterback when he was in Little League, uh, has a very quarterback mindset, so he knows knows for sure what he's looking at when he gets a defense and when he gets certain matchups, and he knows how to get open really well. And then having a a speedster in in, in Brandon um, only helps with the with the deep threat and making defenses scared of of our deep attack and having to play deeper, and so we could start taking advantage of the underneath route. So. Having that sort of contrast between them two and then the other other three or two we got in the receiver room um, is, is is great contrast for us. I love it. I love it. So look, I'm I'm juggling multiple things. Uh, I got Trent Seaborn in the green room. He's itching to join next man. I'm sure you know who that young man is. Uh, but before we get Trent on, let's talk about Texas. Let's talk about the commitment. Zach, go ahead and take it away, man. This is this is your fun conversation. Yeah, I mean, you committed to Texas back in June. What was the main reason for that, and what's so appealing about you know getting to play quarterback in Steve Sarkeesian's system? Um, I mean, I, when I, I visited Texas, probably back when I was in eighth grade, and I wasn't even really a recruit, and I knew I kind of liked the place. Um, but when they started recruiting me, um, 
I feel like the culture that Coach Shark was building and that um, the people, just the people around the place, the culture, the football, the fans, everything about Texas was just, I felt home and for me, um, as well as obviously, like you said, the system, they have a great background with quarterbacks and they have a great coaching staff around quarterbacks and every other position as well. So I felt like that was a, that was a great fit for me. And I, it just felt, felt like home. Home it is, man. So let's talk about home. Home, you know, it's not just one person. Home is made up of multiple individuals, right? So let's talk about some recruits that that maybe you have on your radar that maybe you're texting, you're DMing on Twitter, you're hitting up saying, hey, I want you to come to Texas. Who are some guys that you got on your, on your radar? I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, I can go through a bunch of names I know. I know, I know those guys know that I've been reaching out to them as well. I mean, I can name a couple like Caden Wixick Diet. Um Dixon Wyatt, and then guys like Javion Osborne, Racine Gilmore, uh, Caden Finley, uh, and then the list goes on, like Jay, Jay and Lott. There's a bunch of names I can name. Um, just know that I'll be heavily recruiting those guys and making sure that one day they'll, they'll realize that Texas is the place for them. SEC, Texas. SEC. Yeah, it still sounds That's weird. a big deal, right? It still, it still sounds weird, to be honest, but – yeah, man. So, Zach, anything you got for Dia before we let him get out of here? Well, let's be respectful of his time. He's a student before the athlete. I'm sure, you know, he's probably got some other things to do. So, uh, anything you got before we let him get out of here? Yeah, the last one for me is obviously your dad, Raja Bell, played in the NBA for 12, 13 years. How much has that kind of helped you to kind of prepare to know what you got coming because he's been down that road, know what it's like to be a, a athlete with eyes on him? No, for sure. I, I mean, having two parents that played collegiately and then one in my dad that played uh, played in professional, I mean, having those people to look up to and learn from throughout the entire process is, is just only benefited me because i kind of been advanced in that sort of mindset where I know where I'm supposed to be at and what I'm supposed to be doing in that sort of world. Um, so without, without my mom and my dad, uh, I really don't know where I'd be. But, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff I've learned from them that is only going to help me continuing into my future. Yeah, and look, look, I, I was going to leave Rajai out of it, but, man, look, I was a big fan. I got to grow up watching him play in the league. Uh, so shout hey, out to he Pops. Was a dog. He was a dog, man. That dude, hey, he always wanted to guard the team's best player. I Mad respect for Rajai Bell. He was he was fun to watch for sure. Most definitely. Look, I, I seen him at the showcase. I said, I'm going to let dad be dad and cheer you on. So, you know, shout out to Rajai. But Dia, man, I definitely appreciate you taking the time, jumping on with us. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Shout out to, you know, American Heritage. You guys have had a rocky start, but I think you guys are going to finish very strong. Texas has got a heck of a young man coming their way. And, uh, look, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll run this thing back in due time. Until then, man, I appreciate you jumping on, all right? Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. For sure. Appreciate you. All right, so we didn't recap the American Heritage game. We didn't talk to QB1 DFL. Let's keep this party going, man. Let's talk about another big time matchup that we just had. You know, look, again, I'm I'm just now getting hip to Ohio football. Ohio football is the real deal. We had a big one here with St. Edwards and Maslin. 31-21. I'm pretty sure that wasn't necessarily what we picked, but we said it was possible. So talk to me about this game. What did you see? You know, what stood out to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I like Maslin going into this game just because St. Edwards, his stud running back, Brandon Wyatt, he got hurt uh, in that loss to Boyle County. He's going to probably be out a while. So they're without him, and I knew that was going to kind of be tough for them to overcome. And uh, hey, uh, Jameer Gamble, senior running back, he had a huge game for Maslin. He went for 144 on the ground and two touchdowns, and he was kind of the difference offensively. And I love Maslin's defense. You know, Vito, uh, Vito McConnell – uh, a stud linebacker. He flies around on that defense. And uh, St. Edward is in the game, though. I mean, they had their chances in the fourth quarter. They're down 24-21, had a couple of possessions. But the Tigers' defense really stood strong. And third straight year, they've knocked off St. Edward. It, things don't get any easier, though, this week because uh, they, they welcome one of your teams in your area in the DMV. Uh, DeMath is coming to town Friday, so that'll be a fun one. Yeah, we're definitely going to talk about that DeMath you know, matchup going into Ohio. Uh, it seems like we've had some DMV programs going into Ohio relatively uh, recently. So we'll see what happens with that. But look, 
Ohio football is the real deal. I'm now getting even more okay. hip, and I'm becoming a fan of Maslin. Like, they're just fun to watch when I'm watching the highlights. Like, these kids can play ball. So, definitely, definitely Ohio, fun. Ohio football, Ohio football is like, you know, bring your lunch pail to work football. You know, it's old school, great defense, going to run the ball. And we're going to just see who the stronger man is on Friday night. That's that's what Ohio football really is. It's it's a great brand of football for sure. It's a little different than what we see in Florida, see in California, and even, you know, states like Texas and Georgia. It's just a different brand of football. But fun nonetheless. So let's go from, let's see, we're going to go from Ohio and let's go out, uh, you know, out west. Let's go to Cali. Let's talk about Arizona and California football. What do we have with this Basha game, man? Because I, I I wasn't hip to Basha last week. I'm hip to Basha now. Talk to me. Yeah, I was surprised. I, I thought Mission Viejo would win this game a little more handily, but you know they they walked out with the dub, and that's all that matters. But yeah, Noah Roberts, sophomore running back for Basha, he he showed why he's one of the top dogs in the class of 2027. I think he finished with three touchdowns, went for probably close to 200 yards rushing, if not more. He had a great a great game, but uh, Mission Viejo's offense is loaded. You know, Vance Bafford, stud junior wide receiver. They also got Philip Bell, a, a recent Ohio State commit. And th those are just two of the many wide receivers they have. So, yeah, big win for Mission Viejo. This was – it was nice seeing them finally in a close game to see how they're going to react to adversity. And they handled it well and walked out with a dub. So, uh, impressive win for SoCal over Arizona. One of two big wins for the state of California against Arizona this weekend. So, let's do this. Mission's slate of games don't necessarily get any easier. What are we expecting the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, their they're, they're conference is in the Trinity League. You know, that league is just in a league of its own. But, uh, you know, they'll have, they'll, have, they'll have tough games, man. I mean, obviously, San Clemente's not having as good a year as they did last year, but that's a big rivalry game, so that'll probably be one of their toughest tests. But, yeah, I would, I, I would expect Mission Viejo to run the table as they get ready for the CIF Southern Section D1 playoffs. I'd expect them to be uh, probably the two or three seed, most likely the three seed if Modern Day Bosco, one goes undefeated, and then the other if their only loss is to, you know, Modern Day or Bosco, whoever loses that game. So that that's just crazy to me, though, because that'll be a – we'll see what happens if it's eight or 12 teams in the CIF Southern Section D1 playoffs. But uh, Mission Viejo versus either Modern Day or St. John Bosco in the semifinal is going to be a great game. Yeah, and look, speaking of St. John Bosco, you know, anytime we can plug Coach Negro and team, we got to. Um, shout out to them, man. Like, giving up a home game, playing Servite at SoFi Stadium. That's super huge, not just for the, you know, for high school football, but for these kids, man. They get to experience what it's like to play on the biggest of the, you know, biggest stages. Uh, so that's super cool. Look, Coach Negro don't play no games, man. He will play hey. anytime, anywhere. It doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. He wants to help his kids. Hey. They were in a tough game this last week, too, but they pulled it out against Pittsburgh 35-14. But it was a one-score game all the way till late in the third quarter, I believe. So that was a that was a nice last non-league test for Bosco as they get, you know, they're off this week before they begin uh, Trinity League action on October 4th. Yeah, man. So I'm sure we'll be talking a lot of, a lot of Trinity League matchups going forward for the rest of the season, man. So let's uh... – Let's just kind of stick with that that same setup, and let's pull up another big time game here. And if I'm not mistaken, this was Cali and Arizona, right? Yeah, yeah, another Cali so, AZ matchup. So, so number two of the week, big matchup. Talk to me here. What do we see from uh, from the Centennial game? Yeah, I mean, what you're seeing right now from the Huskies is they're they're getting healthy at the right time. You know, Hassan Longstreet's wasn't 100 percent to start the year. Missed that modern day game. Uh, you know, split time and that loss to Santa Margarita, but they're they're hitting the stride right now, man. They started 0 2. They rolled off three in a row. Longstreet had a, a big time game in that 63 39 win. Defense had two pick sixes. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be another team to watch in that CIF Southern Section D1 playoff bracket too. Once we get there, because they're a team that's also getting some key transfers that had to sit out because of CIF rules. They'll be coming back, so their defense is going to get that much better. They're going to add to an already talented secondary. So, yeah, watch out for the Huskies, man. They're the Inland Empire power. They got one of the best coaches, too, with Matt Logan. And then you got, you know, five-star quarterback who's on long streak with a strong running game and a very talented receiving core led by Corey Butler. So this is a, this is a team to watch out for. 
they're, they might surprise some people once it gets to uh, the playoffs. I hit the wrong button. I needed to unmute myself, not take the graphic off. What I was going to say is I'm pretty sure Centennial is only getting better and better every single week. They're getting yeah. better. They're getting healthier. And that's a scary sight for those that they have to play going forward. Um, and, and like you said, playoff time, man, if they're, if they're doing what they're doing, they're going to be in a, a very good position uh, to ride that wave. So, you know, let's check them out as the season progresses. But let's go from Cali in, in Arizona. And let's talk a big-time Florida matchup again. We love Florida. It's a hot bid. I talked about Brady Hart. You know, we had him on the show. I got a lot of love for Coco. What did we see here, man? Because I did not see this coming, but you did say it was possible. You said, don't be surprised if this happened. What happened? It's just, this was one of those games where it's like, whoever's got the ball last is, is going to win. And speaking of Brady Hart, I mean, he threw for, I think his final numbers was 527 and four touchdowns. You know, Javon Boggs had, I think, nearly 300 yards receiving and three touchdowns. So those two guys did their thing. But Venice, man, this is a a great offensive team. I mean, they're averaging pretty much 60 points per game. So if you want to beat Venice, man, you're going to have to at least score 50. You saw Coco put up 51, and they still walked out with the L. And the crazy thing is, man, uh, their starting running back, Gator Wilder, went down with an injury in the first quarter. And then here comes sophomore Macho Jones, who's been having a, a good season so far, but he really carried the load on offense along with Winston Watkins Jr. So he went for over 200 total yards, had three touchdowns, and he was a key factor, especially they had it third and 15 at their own 20 on that final drive. They threw a little swing pass to him. He made it fourth and one. And then he had that big run on fourth and one to get into Coco territory, tacked on with a 15-yard face mask. So he was he was huge in that game. And Venice, they got Lehigh this week, and then they play IMG Academy. So if they can beat IMG Academy, you're going to see Venice make a leap inside the top 10 for sure. They were one of two new teams to join the rankings this week, along with Maslin. Uh, Venice jumped all the way up to 19 after that win against Coco. Yeah, that IMG is definitely that, you know, that potential pivotal pivotal game, you know, yeah. for the season, right? I mean, they get over that hurdle, then it's it's like, man, <laughs> who wants it? Who's going to be able to knock them off? Who's going to be able to stop them? Because at that point, the, the momentum going into the playoffs is going to be just absolutely silly. So Venice, they're no pushover. Coco, man, where do they go from here for the rest of the year? Yeah, this was uh... – you know, they're they're still right just outside of the top 25. So they're going to still have a chance to finish the year rank for the second consecutive year. Uh, we'll see how the rest of the season plays out, but I'd expect them to be a serious contender once they get to the playoffs and they'll try and win their third consecutive state title. Very possible, but it's no easy, no easy feat, man. So let's see. Let's go from Florida and let's bring in the DMV. St. Francis, when we talk about play anybody, anywhere, anytime, that's exactly what St. Francis is built upon. They do it year in and year out. Pretty much the, the, the heaviest travel schedule in any program every year. This year is no different. They've done been to Cali now twice. They've done been to Texas. Let's talk modern day St. Francis Academy. Last year, it was a good game in Baltimore. St. Francis went out there and made it a good game again in Cali. What did you see here? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the final score doesn't, you know, really decide how it went. Modern day was, they're up 25 nothing, and they, you know, St. Francis got a couple of garbage touchdowns late. But, you know, modern day is just, they're so well balanced. You know, defensively, they're great. Offensively, you know, Jordan Davison didn't play, so you saw the offense kind of struggle a little bit, didn't have a strong rushing game, but... They got so many weapons at wide receiver, even with Chris Henry Jr. still out after getting hurt in that Bishop Gorman game. You know, Marcus Harris caught a touchdown in this one. You know, you got Caden Dixon Wyatt, a stud junior receiver, too. So they're just loaded with talent, have a great offensive line, have a great defensive line, and that's what makes Modern Day the number one team in the country. But yeah, uh, talking about St. Francis, I mean, they went through a three week stretch where they played at Olu. Then they went out to Texas, played Duncanville very tough, lost 28 24 in a game they had a good chance to win. And then they closed out that three game streak with a 25, 14 loss to the number one team in the country. So yeah, you know, respect to coach Masai, what he's doing with the St. Francis program. 
and they'll have a chance to jump back in the rankings, especially, you know, with that game against IMG Academy on November 1st, which will be their first home game of the year, which is insane. Absolutely insane. And uh, for me, you know, hopefully I'll be fortunate enough to be on the sidelines pending uh, media access approval. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to it. St. Francis, man. I mean, they're, they're just, uh, you know, they're dudes that just want to play the best. They want to get better. And, you know, they're doing it with, with, you know, great talent, predominantly from the DMV area. And they I'll travel. Say yeah, I'll say this too, man. Zion Ely, that dude is a five-star for a reason. He's showing it this year. I mean, he played great against Duncanville, and he had another great game against Modern Day last Friday. Yeah, and, and you know, he went from, a, you know, a smaller public program, you know, in the DMV and was pretty locked in when I when I last talked to him you know, at the Under Armour camp. And then, you know, kind of out of the blue, he made the the transfer, made the announcement he's going to St. Francis, which in my opinion, I think, you know, is a good thing for him because now he's able to showcase what he's able to do, not just at a camp or, you know, against mediocre talent, no disrespect to, you know, those programs. But now he's doing it on a national stage against the best of the best pretty much week in and week out. So, you know, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And he's, he's still got a whole nother year to come back and do it again, which is crazy. Um, man, I, I don't know what they're feeding these kids. I'm, I'm hopeful that my son grows up to be as big and strong as a lot of these kids, man, because there are some crazy good athletes out there. But let's not stop there, man. Let's, uh, let's stay talking about the DMV, and let's get into some big games coming up this week. So you talked yeah. about DeMatha going in and playing Mastin. They're going to Ohio. Well, we had Archbishop Spalding, right? They went into Ohio earlier this year. Yeah, be hoping. And, and, and they won. Do we see a repeat with DeMatha and Maslin? Or do we have Maslin going over DeMatha? Talk to me here. What do you see? This is, this is a toss-up, man, because I, I felt like DeMatha, even in that loss to Archbishop Spalding earlier in the year, it was a 26-10 loss. But the final score doesn't really – show you how close of a game that was. DeMatha had their chances, especially in the second half. They just couldn't get things going on offense. Uh, we'll see this week. Maslin's got a good defense. I think the Ohio team's going to walk out with a dub here. You know, last year you saw another DMV power in St. John's go out and play Maslin. They lost that game. The game was called in the fourth quarter. The officiating was kind of suspect and it was getting pretty physical. And both coaches decided to just call the game with like five, six minutes left. So hopefully we get to play all four quarters in this one. But I'd expect a very close game. And I think it's going to come down to which quarterback turns the ball over less. Both are are pretty good quarterbacks. So should be a fun matchup. But And also got two good running backs. You know, Bud Coombs, stud for DeMatha. And then obviously you saw Jameer Gamble last week against St. Ed. So it should be a pretty even matchup. But I, I expect Maslin to find a way to win this one. So you got Maslin. I'm staying home. I'm going to Matha. Got to stay true to the DMV in this particular, you know, situation. I think LeVar Keys is going to have a hell of a game. I got him going over 100 with two touchdowns, you know. So so quote me on that. We'll talk about it next week. But I got DMV over Ohio in this particular matchup. Hey, LeVar, man, he's a 2026 Penn State commit, I believe. That dude can fly, man. He's got track speed. And, you know, you could see him be a Xavier Worthy type playmaker for DeMatha. Yeah, as, as long as the quarterback can put it in the air, LeVar, you know, he's going to outrun the guy beside him almost every single time. That dude is lightning fast, you know, and, and again, I've watched a handful of in-person games with LeVar, so he's a lot of fun to watch. So uh, let's let's go from Ohio and let's talk about IMG, Phoenix City, or, you know, Central yeah, here yeah. in uh, Phoenix City Central in, um, in Alabama, man. They played, they played last year, right? if I'm not mistaken, or was it the year before? Well, I know they played was, recently. It was, it was 2022. It was a it was a close game that IMG pulled away late. That was, uh, yeah, that was Cam Coleman's sophomore year. Yeah, and that's uh, I think that's when they had A.J. Harris on the defensive end for his senior season uh, for Central. So yeah, either or, I mean, it was, it was fun to watch then, and then it was like, look, we got to run this thing back. IMG's back in town, coming to Alabama. What do we got here? This should be a fun one, man. This is the only Max Prep's top 25 matchup of the week. You know, uh, Central Phoenix City, I think they're riding an 18-game winning streak. So 
you know, it's going to be tough to get into to 19 because IMG Academy is playing their best ball. You know, they obviously lost that opener 35, 34 against Corner Canyon, but they've bounced back with uh, wins against Bergen Catholic. They also beat Coco. They beat a talented Mandarin team last week. We won't really, you know, say a quality win against Mount Zion prep. So, but yeah, Central Phoenix City, they were, they were in a tough one against Dothan a couple weeks ago. And then, uh, last week they were in a, a tight one too against Enterprise, and then they they pulled away late to win thirty four twenty one. I I think this game's going to be close early, but I, I think IMG is going to be too much to handle. But I'll say this, man, Patrick Nix, the you know father of Bo Nix, he's a great head coach. He won two state titles at Pinson Valley with Bo as his quarterback, and then he won another one last year going undefeated in seven A in Alabama, which is a, a very tough task to do and they beat Thompson in the state title game. So this should be a fun one, but I think IMG is going to win this one by a couple of touchdowns. I think they're just too loaded on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I can't disagree. I, I think I'm going IMG as well by a couple of scores. Um, and you said Mount Zion. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I had to they, throw that one out there. Yeah, well, let, let's, let's talk about IMG, though. They got St. Francis, you know, in November, so, you know, in about a month and some change. Um, but, you know, they, they've got St. Thomas More, I think, from Connecticut, another private school. They're coming down. You know, are then they, they got they, Venice, too, though. Then they got Venice. That's another well, game. Well, that, 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 that's where I'm going at. Do, you know, yeah. outside of the Venice game, St. Fran, like, is it, you know, are those the only two remaining on the schedule that really is, you know, going to challenge IMG in a position where, you know, it's like, man, you know, they could get knocked off? Or is there somebody that, that you think might just be able to squeak in there and pull out an upset? um at some point in the remaining season yeah i it's those three for sure you got central phoenix city and then venice and then st francis outside of that i'd expect some img mount zion prep outcome outcome so fair enough 50 plus we'll, we'll leave it at that that's img that's alabama you know phoenix you know city what is it central phoenix city is that the, yeah. the appropriate yeah. no, i'm gonna tongue hey. twister man Everyone knows looking at no, oh, don't matter, man. But yeah, Central Phoenix City. You can just go Central, whatever you want to do, whatever you're yeah. feeling, you know. Either or, my guy AJ Harris, you know Cam, both of them, you know, been been true to to the Spotlight Thirty Nine brand. I've had them both on at some point in their career, so you know I got love for for Central down there in Alabama, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they knock off IMG. Um, but I do I'll have say IMG. This. You know, the state of Alabama has played IMG pretty tough, even though IMG is 5-0 and against the state. So they've never lost to a team from Alabama. But they played them tough, man. Central Phoenix City played them tough a couple of years ago. I can't remember if it was 2022 or 2021. It might have been 2022, and I think it was actually Cam's uh, junior season. But we'll see. You know, IMG's played Hoover before. And then, uh, you know, they played Auburn, too, and Auburn played them tough. So we'll, we'll see. But, yeah, I'd be surprised if uh, – Central Phoenix City. Now you got me messing the name up. Doesn't extend their winning streak. <laughs> I don't see it happening, man. But we'll see. That's why they play the game. Uh, look, we we will see. We will see. It goes down this week, seven p.m. What is it? Friday night, right? So yeah, Friday. Night. Let's go from Bama and let's move to I don't know tropical paradise. Let's talk about Hawaii because these are the two you know premier programs in, in Hawaii. Am I mistaken? No, they are. I mean, obviously, St. Louis was for a while. They fell off a little bit. They've been, you know, a little more competitive this year. But yeah, these are these are the two top dogs. James Campbell's obviously been very good this year too. So I'd say those are the the three in the three horse race so far this year. But yeah, you know, you look at these two programs, Kahuku. They're four and two, but those two L's came to Modern Day and Bishop Gorman. So you know, nothing to hang their head on there. And Milani's five and zero, oh, which is impressive because they're without their starting quarterback Keeney McMillan who's uh you know the reigning Max Preps Hawaii player of the year here to shoulder in the first game of the year and still hasn't played and they're still 5-0 and they had a, a nice road trip out here on the west coast they beat Liberty who's kind of having a down year they're one and four a uh, team out in Henderson Nevada and then they beat Los, Los Alamitos so a, a pretty good team down in Southern California that's Los Al's only loss of the season so I, I've been impressed with both these teams so far I think Kahuku is going to find a way to win this one. They got their stud back, Mana Carvalho, who's an absolute playmaker at wide receiver. 
And uh, I just think not having Keeney McMillan at quarterback is going to be too much for Milani to overcome. But I'll say this, Kahuku had a, I believe it was a 31-game in-state winning streak snapped last year against Milani, and then Kahuku came back and won the state title game 21-19, in a game Milani probably should have won, but uh, I think Kahuku is going to win this one. I think they're going to improve to 5-2 and two on the season and had Milani its first loss. Yeah, and look, I, I know we shouldn't agree all the time, but I do, you know, I, I have to go with Kahuku, and I think predominantly it's because of the strength of schedule. I think because, you know, they've they've been through, you know, such powerhouse programs, you know, their guys are are mentally prepared for what's to come. Um, you know, and, and look, Hawaii programs are built different. We've seen them, you know, play well against Bosco, play well enough to, to come out yeah. with a win, right? You know, we see them coming over to the States and, and they want to play the best of the best, uh, which is a lot of fun to see. But I think Kahuku is just, you know, in a position to to be a little bit better and come out with the win. So we'll see. I'm still getting hip to Hawaii. It's a lot of fun. But, you know, I'm learning a little bit more about Kahuku each week just because I seem I feel like this is like third or fourth time we've talked about them this season. Yeah. Like you said, man, they always they play all the teams, you know, that's impressive to play a modern day and Bishop Gorman. Those are the two teams that started ranked at number one, number two, obviously, you know, Gorman dropped a couple of spots after that loss to modern day. But yeah, like you said, it's just the better teams you play, it's going to make you better when you play games like this, but also shout out to Milani. They came out to the West coast. They came out to California, Nevada and played two road games and won both those two, but they're obviously, you know, those two programs aren't modern day and Bishop Gorman. That part is very true. So let's take it from Hawaii and let's bring it back to the States. Let's talk about this game right here. We got Lee County 5-0. and And then who are they playing? Yeah, Lee County and Thomas County Central. This should be yeah. this will be a this is gonna be a fun game, man. Both these teams are five and oh in the state of Georgia. And these are two of the teams that are probably gonna be Milton's right up there toughest uh test when it comes to the five A state playoffs. You know, uh, Thomas County, they're the defending 6A state champs. Uh, They brought back some guys, but they lost some key players, but they've been playing great ball so far this year. Uh, Lee County's uh, got a stud running back, Usman Kroma. He's been balling out since he was a freshman. So we'll we'll see. That's going to be a fun matchup because we'll see how Thomas County's defense can stop that dude because that dude has pretty much not been stopped his whole high school career. Uh, This – I don't know. I, I keep going back and forth on this one, but uh, Thomas County's had a lot of success in this series. They're 23 and three all time against Lee County. Uh, Lee County did get two wins in a row in 2016 and 2017, I believe. And then last year was the first time they played since then. And uh, uh, Thomas County won last year's meeting. So uh, I'm going to go with Thomas County in this one, but I expect a close game. Look, I'm going to go against the grain and I'm going Lee County in this one. And I got Lee County by a score, and I think it's only going to be a three-point game. I think it's going to be very close um, just because the defense, the offense, um, the running back, like you said, I mean, nobody's been able to stop him. Who's been able to stop him? Nobody. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a grown man when he was a freshman, dude. He's, he's a stud. <laughs> that dude, he's one of the best in the country for sure. So Lee County, we'll see. It goes down this weekend. Big, big matchup in this, the great state of Georgia. And, and speaking of, you know, the Georgia State Championship games and all that fun stuff, um, you know, I actually just confirmed today that I'm locked in. I'm going to the nice. state championship games in the Benz. So I'm going back down to Georgia. Looking forward to that. Uh, Coach Rees, man, he's a great dude at Milton. He said, worst case scenario, if nobody answers my emails for credentials, he's put me on the team bus. Milton, he said, is going back to the state championship. So I'm in the building regardless. Uh, but look, let's just finish out the night. We still got one more game to talk about. Uh, but before we do, let's bring on our next special guest. Without further ado, it's not one. It's three. Let's bring them one. I think you know who they are. The legend himself, Mr. Clinton Portis, Miami Hurricane, great Washington football team commanders, Redskins, call it what you want. NFL great is what he was. And then as you see, we got two of his young men uh, tapped in with us. We got Chaz and we got Camden. Fellas, how are you feeling? Can you hear me all right? Talk to me. Yes, yes sir. I'm feeling good. Good deal, man. Look, look, Camden over there smiling. He, he's going to be the quiet one. I can already tell. So, uh, 
So let's just kind of kick it off. Let's talk about the off season, right? You know, let's kind of start. What did the off season look like for you fellas? I know, you know, you guys hit some camps. Um, was there any seven on seven? Talk to me about the off season and then specifically, you know, how that, that work translated to the start of the season already with your four game sample size. Um, you know, and since Camden wants to, to lay back and, and, and smile, we're going to let him start. We're going to get him talking early. pretty good for me um i think i developed really well and then i competed really well throughout camps i think i showcased myself a lot uh this summer yeah man i i wouldn't disagree on that i think uh the recruiting has been uh you know a, a nice reflection of the hard work that you you put in this all season uh i think you know at the start of the season i think you were a three star at some point and then you know myself you know, my guy McCann and, you know, a handful of others, man, we've been going to bat saying, no, this dude is not a three-star. This dude is, is one of the best in the country. And when you started camping, the world started to see it and it was fun to watch. And then all of a sudden, boom, coaches started to realize we started to see more offers, you know, more blessings come your way. So kudos to a great off season there. But Chaz, man, what, what's your off season looking like? What you do? My off season was pretty good. You know, I got way more better way better than I was last year, improved myself. I got to showcase myself at a couple of seven on seven camps, you know, put myself on the map, get on a good on coaches radars. So it was pretty good. I like it, man. So, so that was the humble answers. So, so go ahead, dad, chime in and talk to me. What, what did these boys really do this off season and how is it really trans, you know, translated from the off season to Friday night lights already? Um, I think unbeknown to them, you know, just the plan was, uh, kind of to get uh, Cam in a situation where he can move around, get him from uh, sitting outside that corner where he can actually display his skill, putting him at nickel. I think that was his biggest move uh, in January. You know, when we started the 707 season, uh, we went to work on him at nickel. And I think that opened a lot of eyes and doors for him uh, with his size, uh, you know, almost being six feet. Uh, being able to cover the, the slot, uh, being able to move around inside, and you already know he can play outside. Now, I think for Chaz, it was more of uh, his confidence breaking him uh, and, and showing him, like, people need to respect you. You know, I think we worked a lot on uh, press coverage this offseason where you know, at the beginning of the press, Cam was slinging him to the ground. And it, eventually it came to the point where once he understood uh, – route running, his speed, his skill set, where you got to make the defender uh, fear you. I think just for the both of them, iron shop is iron. So uh, for them to be able to go one-on-one -on -one and have those intense uh, comp competitive matchups, I think opened both of them up uh, a lot because I think Cam kind of struggled with smaller, faster, quicker uh, receivers. Chaz struggled with uh, being jammed at the line, but we broke – you know, we, we worked on that, and uh, now I think it's a strong point for both. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, the off-season film definitely reflects just that. Iron definitely sharp as iron. And when you got brothers that can compete against each other, you know, line up day after day, you know, you're bound to get better. And the fact that, you know, you're able to recognize what they needed to work on and implement that, and, and they took direction, you know, it, it pays dividends. So, you know, shout out to you guys you know, for listening to Pops, man, because, you know, I think he knows a little something. But, Zach, what do you got for, for the guys? Yeah, man, uh, you know, with me, I, I don't really get into the seven-on-seven seven stuff. I like to see what happens with the pads on. And I've been super impressed with both of you guys this year, watching you guys this tape this year, especially playing at a program like Myers Park, you know, one of the premier programs in the state of North Carolina. Now, I want to start with you, Chaz, because you're having a great junior season so far this year. You're leading the team and receiving – what are some things you took from your freshman and sophomore year that helped you develop into the success you're having early on this season? Some things I took was, you know, people always doubting and like the trash talking, I don't get into that. So like at one point I, I just had to prove myself and just let them know, like, you're going to have to show me like you could do something. In Camden, you already got, you know, 20 plus offers to your name. What are, some schools that are really standing out. I mean, I know Pops went to the U, but uh, what are what are some other schools that might be standing out to you early on in the recruiting process? 
Um, I really, I really like Tennessee. I like Tennessee program. I need to go up there for a game, see how um how the environment really is. But they 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 reach out a lot. Missouri's playing pretty good football as well. With Auburn, they have four turnovers. It just seems like they can't score. But they yeah. defense they getting they they getting the ball back for the offense, creating more chances. And then of course you know Miami top rank, Ole Miss top rank. So everybody, my to my top schools are playing really good, really good football right now. And Ohio State, I forgot to talk about Ohio State. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't leave out Ohio State, man. Every, every you know, when the that. list starts to to climb, you're like, man, like who who did I leave off? Let me let me pull out my pen and paper, make sure I'm not missing anybody. Um, but look, so with that, I, go ahead. He' about to get kicked out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> look, you better you better be good, man. So let's just talk about the rest of the season. We're four games in. You know, obviously, we still got another slate to go. You know, what can we expect to see from you guys individually? Uh, and then talk to me about the team, you know, because I think it's it's great to have you guys on. But I think it's also great to have you talk about some of the guys on the squad that maybe don't necessarily get the attention and the recognition. And if you want to shout anybody out, by all means, do so. But I'm just curious, you know, what's the rest of the season going to look like for you guys? Oh, who going to start it off? Me, Chaz? I go. Uh, <laughs> he went low. He went from the quiet one to let me talk first. I like it. Man. <laughs> well, of course, I'm I'm gonna start off with my defensive guys, of course. Um our D line makes it really easy for for us in the secondary. Um, because they do get to the ball. Five star edge, Rodney Dunham. He's get he gets to the ball, he gets his hands up, he forcing the quarterbacks out the pocket. It's just hard for a lot of quarterbacks to really sit in there and throw the ball. So everybody got to run the ball, and that's where you see on my tape. We making tackles on on the perimeter, getting to the ball. I got like four or five tackles for losses. Everybody has to go quick because nobody's gonna nobody's gonna have success passing the ball intermediate or going deep. With I was that, say, uh, yeah, that you, front. your support cast definitely makes it a little challenge, you know, the the opposing quarterback. That's for sure. So, uh, but nah, yeah. And we def um, and then the secondary. Got some unsung heroes with even behind the scenes. Cap, he on you every day hard at practice. So even though we only covering for like two, three seconds, if we have to cover a little bit longer, I feel like our guys are doing that pretty well uh, right now, especially progressing through the season. We had oh. three picks the last game, two before, uh, four the game before that. So, they so, so, so you're making the defense sound really, really good. At what point this season are you guys going to get challenged? It's got to come at some point. So what what school do you have, you know, marked on your 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 you know calendar right now that you're looking forward to? Uh, you know that that might challenge you guys just a little bit. Well, the games that we had circled, we ain't, we didn't show up in, and I think that really set us off because, of course, you know Huff, premier program in in the North Carolina area, Independence, premier program in North Carolina area. We end up shutting Independence down in the second half, but it was it was too late. They didn't score after the first quarter, but we were already down uh, too much. So I feel like going t- towards the end of the season, I think this next game will probably be the um, be a, be a challenge with their run game. All right. So what about the offensive side, Chaz? What you got? What can we look forward to, to from offense. you and this, some of your guys? On the offense, I feel like this far, so far we've been doing pretty good. Even with us losing our quarterback, Jared, that hurt us a lot. But, you know, we had some guys step up, Cam Guy, uh, Ryan Rizzuti, those two young young kids. Uh, I feel like they could get the job done. They could take us a long way, possibly have a good playoff run. Um, and the receiver core, you know, everybody knows Brody Keith. Not a lot. No M.A. Mariangelo Skins. Yeah, the fast kid. Uh yeah, we've been we've been we've been making a lot of progress lately, so I feel like we should we should do good. We should do better. All right. So so what's Pop's take, man? What are what are you looking forward to for the rest of the season, or what do you what are some of your expectations, you know, for these these guys for the rest of the year? Well, for me, I think uh, Chaz started off on fire. He 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 started off the season uh, on fire, and you know we took a big loss. Uh, with the quarterback going down, with Lockhart going down, 
um, you know, ACL, MCL, PCL, uh, and that was a, it's going to be show overcome. But like you said, we got some young guys. Um, I think Coach Boone is, is putting the young guys in a situation uh, to grow and get better. So if they continue to get better over the season, it sucks because he was trying to get Lockhart ready, and he finally got to the point where I think he was really ready to unleash, and he goes down on a fluke play. Um, so now getting these guys ready in season, it's only so much you can put on them. So uh, Chaz, you know, I think it's just one of those questions where figuring out a way to maintain uh, what he was already given. And for Cam, I think um, being in the box, you know, being able to make plays, uh, to move around uh, has been good. But as the season progressed, you know, getting back outside, uh, definitely in, in the red zone, uh, giving him that opportunity to match up one-on-one -on -one with the best receivers we face uh, when we get into the red zone. We kind of struggled with that uh, in these first four games where we gave up some touchdowns uh, just, you know, uh, just because it was early in the season. So I think uh, in this later half of the season, uh, putting him in position to take guys out of the game so you can kind of uh, cater the defense away from him and leave him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, so we can uh, expose, you know, and show that he can play outside. And, you know, like it's just a full uh, range as a DB. Yeah, no, that would – I mean, that's going to be fun to, you know, look forward to for the rest of the season. What do you got for him, Zach, before we let these guys go? We try to stay true to that, that 10 to 15 mark, so I'm going to be very respectful of your time. Anything you want to, you know, have from these guys before we let them get out of here? Yeah, I got one for Pops, man. I mean, you got two great young men coming up here and, you know, creating their own path. What what have been some things that you're most proud of outside of football that you've seen with these two young, great young men? I think the grades, man. You know, I, I think um, Chaz got an opportunity. We were at UCLA and – uh, you know, he kind of had a conversation with the coaches and they asked him about his grades, kind of set him back. And I think from that moment on, I haven't had to uh, discuss that with, with him, you know. Uh, for Cam, I think just the growth uh, over these last two years, being able uh, to understand and, and see just your exposure, the opportunity you got, being able to handle uh, your own slate, uh, to handle your own schedule and, and understand you got a golden opportunity, man. You know, it's up to you to uh, put it away, you know, kind of uh, grab a hold to it and take off. You know, I think we put in so much work uh, to get him built up from uh, January to now. Now it's kind of one of those he on pilot control uh, and, you know, we're trying to get Chaz to that point. And I think both of them are doing a great job. Um, you know, even even with the conversation, talking to coaches, uh, being visible to coaches, learning how to carry themselves. You know, uh, when people see them or talk to them or come back, it's like well, those are some really good kids. You know, the kids are funny. The kids got personality. Whatever it is, it's not necessarily about sports. So I think that's a good thing, and it's going to carry them a long way. And they just have to uh, continue to advance, continue to grow, continue to get better. Um, at that, and I think it's going to kick. Away. Yeah, the fact yeah, that they're hey, able Bob, to be. I got, go ahead. I got one more. I got one more. This is a fun one, man. So I know y'all are brothers, man. But what do the one-on-one -on -one matchups look like between y'all two? Who's winning those one-on-ones? I just want no, no. I won the last one. Right now, I'm up. So I don't All even right. want him to get. Whoa, 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 whoa! Right right you, you're not up. You're not up. You won the in last practice, one. That's in practice. Okay, you won the last. one. A five yard out. I'm up in practice. I'm up in practice. Listen, it it was lopsided at one point over the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get, let's get to it. Dominate Chaz, like no lie. He was he was dominate Chaz, and um, I think it kind of woke Chaz up because probably for three or four weeks he was on a tear, toasting everything, everybody. Uh, we had a lot of other guys uh, that you all might know. Um, the Steel Fletcher, the Cam Vance. Uh, we had a lot of other guys out here training uh, with us where they were just competing. And I think if, if you go and look at Cam Vance, he's on a tear. You know, speaking of uh, other kids uh, at Northwestern High School, he's on a tear. I think he lead the state 
in every receiving category, touchdowns, nine touchdowns in three games, I think. Um, the yards, all of that. So I think the, the crew of kids that they have, uh, for all of them to put the work that they've been putting in, Chaz came, like he came home one day, and I'm like, Cam, kick your butt. And, you know, he was just like, okay, watch this, watch this. And from that point on, I would say, like, it's been 50-50. One might win, but it's not that lopsided stuff, uh, that uneven situation. Because anytime Cam wanted to take Chaz away, he just walked down and put hands on him. And then once Chaz learned how uh, to get off the jam and, and you lunch at him, you want to now, because the first two steps is over. So uh, I think it's been real competitive. And if they keep that up, it's going to take them a long way. Look, that's iron sharpened iron. You know, Pops kept it real. We we had a little little fun dispute, but now nah, Pops brought in the the real talk, and and you know that's that just speaks volume, right? Because we've seen that development from from you know Cam throughout the off season, and now we're starting to see that you know on the Friday Night Lights with the film with Chaz. So you know the rest of the season is definitely going to be entertaining. It's definitely going to be fun to watch, uh, fellas, man. Anything you guys want to get off your chest before we let you get out of here and be the student before the athlete. You know, hopefully you guys got the homework done. But just in case, you know, we're still early enough on the East Coast. You got a little bit of time before you call it a night. Uh, if not, I'm going to say I appreciate you, fellas. And, and Clinton, man, I appreciate you for tapping in, having the guys on short notice. Um, best of luck. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And uh, I appreciate you guys jumping on. All right. Appreciate you all having us. Man. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, look, we had three special guests on at one time. You know, Mr. Clinton Portis, he went to the U, had a great NFL career. And then we, we got to chat, you know, with the, the two young men, 2026 wide receiver, 2026 DB, Chaz and Cam uh, Portis. So a lot of fun, a lot of great conversation there. But we don't stop, man. We got one more big matchup, and then we got one more special guest to close out the show. So before we bring the next guest on, let's set the stage for West Side Weddington. Big matchup. Look, the defense on Weddington is just absolutely locked and loaded. Talk to yeah. me. What do you see here in this matchup? Yeah, this is, uh, you know, on top of that, this is bragging rights between South Carolina and North Carolina. You know, West Side won state title last year in South Carolina. They're off to a 4 0 start. They got Cutter Woods, a 2025 South Carolina committed quarterback. He was, uh, he was our uh, Max Prep South Carolina player of the year last year, had a big time season. He's playing even better this year. We're going to find out, though, on Friday because Weddington, as you mentioned, they've got one of the best defenses in the country. Uh, Trajan Odom, Ohio State commit on the D-line. Then you got the Harris brothers also. And then you got Thomas Davis Jr., you know, son of former great Carolina linebacker Thomas Davis, that linebacker. He's doing big things. You know, Weddington had that big win against Providence Day earlier in the season. Westside's had some good wins, too. So we'll see how this one plays out. But I think Weddington's defense is going to be just too much to handle for West Side. But, hey, Cutter Woods, man, he's a baller. So we're going to find out Friday. But I'm leaning for the North Carolina team here. I think their defense is just a little too good. Well, hopefully we're not jinxing them because I got Weddington in this matchup as well. I think the defense has just got too much firepower, uh, you know, for, or, you know, too much, too much, uh, you know, ammunition. For, for all the firepower that, that Westside might try to bring. So, you know, that's going to be a close one. They're locked in on the defensive side. I think it's going to be a battle. Uh, I think Weddington squeaks it out by at least a touchdown. But like you said, it goes down Friday night. It could go either or, North Carolina, South Carolina. But the fun doesn't stop there, man. We've had a hell of a night. We've been had all kinds of special guests. So why not have one more? We're not recapping his game, but I'm going to let my guy, Zach, kind of just kind of set the stage before we bring on QB1, Thompson High School out of Alabama. You've probably been watching this dude from seventh grade. We're going to have him on in just a second. But talk to me about the the Thompson game this this weekend before we bring Trent on. Yeah, I remember eighth grade year for Trent, man. It was against Buford. I think it was Thompson's season opener. And they were struggling on offense. He came in as an eighth grader playing against Buford, who was loaded with D1 guys, and he drove them right down the field and had a touchdown drive. So, And then obviously later on that year, he led Thompson to a state title as an eighth grader. But, yeah, they got a big game coming up this week. Clay Chalkville's 4-0 should be a fun one. And I know Thompson wants to get a little revenge on Clay Chalkville because these two played last year 
it was a great game, but Clay Chalkville walked away with a 36-33 win. So uh, I think Trent's going to want to get this one back. And they've been fun to watch this year. You know, obviously they dropped their season opener against Grayson, but they've won four in a row heading into Friday's matchup. Look, I am terrible with this mute button. I got like 15 screens up right now, but I'm excited. Look, I, I became a fan of Trent, you know, when I, I learned about who he was when he went viral in the state championship grade, you know, game his eighth grade year, broke the the state records, you know, for that class. And I was like, holy smokes, this kid's in eighth grade. I didn't know that was a thing. And then I got hit very quick. And then I've been able to watch this young man continue to grow and develop. So without further ado, let's bring him on Thompson High School out of Alabama. QB1 2027, crazy to say 2027, Trent Seaborn. Let's bring him on. Look, you've seen this young man since probably seventh, eighth grade. It's crazy to think he's a 27 and he's only a sophomore and he's already breaking records, owning records, all that fun stuff in the great state of Alabama. This is QB1 2027, Trent Seaborn, Thompson High School. How you feeling good, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? Look, man, I can't complain. We're having a great night. I got my my guy Zach on. You know, no, you know, we say he broke out the popcorn yet. It's coming. At some point, we're gonna break out the popcorn. That's what he's known for, based on you know, if you look at his his nice profile pictures. But look, let's talk about you, and let's talk about this crazy thing called football, and uh, you know, all the great things that you do. So let's kick it off. Let's just kind of rewind the clock just a little bit. You know, for those that don't know, when did you start playing varsity football? When did you get called up? When did you take your first snap? And then kind of just give me a snapshot of what that was. And then we're going to talk about, you know, what we're looking at already this year in your sophomore campaign. Yes, sir. So um, I was pulled up to varsity um, spring of my seventh grade year, um, going into my eighth grade year. And then uh, my eighth grade year, um, that was the 2022 season, I think. Um, uh, I played my first varsity snap, actually the uh, first game of the season. Um, it was towards the end of the game. Uh, we were playing Buford. Um, it, was it was a really good team that we played, uh, big powerhouse, as I'm sure you guys know. And then uh, my first actual uh, varsity start was um, first round of playoffs my eighth grade year. Um, so I started uh, all three uh, playoff games and also the state championship game. And then uh, my first full season um, of starting was my freshman year last year. And I, uh, I started the whole year um, through uh, playoffs and also stayed again. And then, uh, and then now I'm on to my sophomore year this year. Outrageous, man. Like, I didn't even realize seventh and eighth graders could even touch the ball in varsity in high school until I seen you – in the state championship game, I'm scratching my head. They, there's no way this kid is an eighth grader slinging five, what was it, five touchdowns, you know, high school record for, for your class in Alabama. It was outrageous. Whatever the numbers were, they were silly. And then you've only gotten bigger, stronger, faster as time's gone on. So let's talk about this, you know, this year so far. How many games have we played so far? And then really, you know, what what do you see from your game that, that's, you know, working well based on all the hard work you've done this offseason. And then maybe point something out that, you know, maybe you've recognized that you want to sharpen or, or get that much better at going forward. And then I'm going to let my guy Zach jump in. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so we're going into uh, week six this week um, versus Clay Chalkville. And, um, you know, the, the main strengths that I, you know, I've gotten better on this year is kind of um, really from a leadership standpoint. Um, now that I'm, you know, not the young guy on the team, I'm more of a, a older guy, kind of a veteran. Um, I'm trying it's to crazy to think. Step into that leadership role um, and kind of just uh, lead my teammates, you know, especially the younger guys that maybe don't have um, as much experience or anything like that. And then the big thing, you know, is um, just like we don't um, – we don't have, you know, those four or five star guys, the big names, you know, 40 plus offers kind of guys. And, you know, that's that's nothing I can complain about. You know, I, I love my teammates so much. And I think the main thing is being able to create plays and still be able to win games, you know, with with the guys I got. And the guys I got are great receivers, great old linemen, great running backs. And uh, also, you know, our defense is really, really good. That's that's where our big name guys are. And uh, overall, as a team, we, uh, we've improved every week. Um, even from week one, we played Grayson um, out of Georgia. That was a very, very good team we played. And that really showed where our strengths and weaknesses are. And we've been trying to improve on that um, each and every week. Yeah, in that Grayson game, uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken, that was ESPN, right? I mean, it, that's crazy to think high school football is now getting ESPN primetime, you know, airplay. And I love to see it. I'm on the sidelines at another game tapped in, seeing what Trent's doing on ESPN. That was a lot of fun to watch. Didn't quite work out how you wanted it, um, but shout out to Grayson. I mean, it was a heck of a game, hard-fought battle. Uh, but, Zach, go ahead and take it away. 
What do you want to talk to this young man about? Yeah, I just want to talk, you know, how the season's gone so far. Obviously, you brought up the Grayson game. Went to overtime. You know, that was a tough loss. But you guys have bounced back with four consecutive wins. What are some things that you guys are liking as you head into this, you know, game against Clay Chalkville, a team that's 4-0? Obviously, you know, they had to replace Jalen Mbakwe, got a new head coach, but they're playing great ball. You know, what are some things you're looking forward to this Friday night against them? Because last year, that was a great game, but they pulled it out 36-33. So I know you guys want to get some back there. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, even though some of their guys are, you know, graduated and they don't have their um, head coaches last year, they're still a very, very good team with very, very good athletes. You know, they they produce athletes every year. And uh, um, I think their new head coach has done a really good job, you know, already starting off the season 4-0. So I think this uh, this game this week is going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be a really great competition. Um, you know, it's not a region game for us, so we don't have to worry about it, you know, affecting our uh, our playoff seed ranking or anything like that. So we can just go out and play, um, do what we got to do. Uh, we got to, you know, execute um, on offense, on defense. You know, as I said, they're really, really good on that side. So they're going to take care of it. And, uh, you know, we just got to run the ball. And off of running the ball, we got to throw the ball too. Yeah, so speaking of that, I know you touched on the defense a little bit. I got a shout out, you know, and it was Antoine Fagans. He's doing big things. I mean, he's had – monstrous play after play um what was the 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 game when he had what how many sacks was it whatever it was the stat line was crazy the voting for for player of the week came up and i was like oh this dude is a stud i've been following him you know since i think his freshman year playing seven on seven uh so i just had to shout out fagans and uh, that whole family man because they show hey, me hey, love. Real though, like trent seaborn and anquan fagans those two guys are accustomed to being on the max preps all american teams pretty much every year and you got to give a shout out to Jared Smith this year too. I mean, he's proven to be one of the best edge rushers so far in the early oh, part. Man, of the I'm season. glad you said that. I was I was totally about to miss Smith. So that's that's <laughs> that's who I was thinking about with the the player of the week. Um, not Fagans. That's look, that was a mind fart. That's my fault. But you guys are locked in on the defensive side, and you you kind of talked about you know how not necessarily in the offensive side they're not big names, right? They're not the three and four and five star recruits like you know you have on the defensive side. However you know, if we think about the pros, and, and I, I bring this analogy up, you have Tom Brady, and look what he did in, in New England with, you know, quote, twos and threes at wide receivers. And he made them, you know, superstars because they were able to run the route, they were locked in, and they had a quarterback that could put the ball, you know, in the pocket whenever he needed to. And that's exactly what you're doing with your core. So, you know, I just needed to call that out. Uh, but look, let's kind of jump the gun here, man. Let's Let's talk about the rest of the season and what we can expect to see from you and the rest of Thompson going forward while you chase yet another championship run. But yeah, I mean, the goal, the goal every year is to win that state championship. You know, um, we, that's something that our uh, coach, coach Freeman, our head coach that he, uh, he really emphasizes is that our end goal um, at the end of every year is to get that, that blue map, that, uh, that ring. And uh, that's, you know, the same goal this year. Um, and, you know, like you said, with, with Tom Brady and making, you know, the twos and threes around him, around him great that's that's what great quarterbacks do and that's kind of what my focus is this year is to be able to make the guys around me great um and that's that's what we're we're focusing on for especially for the rest of the season this next half of the season now, I, I gotta it, i gotta jump in here too because i mean i feel like alabama is one of the most underrated states when it comes to high school football uh, talk about some other teams in 7a you know obviously central phoenix city a team you guys played in the state title game last year they're off to a 5 and 0 start they're playing img academy on friday and then the team that you beat as an eighth grader in the state title game, Auburn, they're playing great football so far. So just talk about 7A football and how competitive it is playing in Alabama. Oh, that's the – it's funny. That's actually the whole reason why my family and I moved down here from Colorado was, you know, to play really good high school competition. You know, just just in our region, you know, we have we have Hoover. Um, that's, you know, been a big name um, over the years. We've, we have Hewitt Trustville, um, Vestavia, um, you know, those are just a few big names and just just in our region. Um, we all, you know, in other regions um, in 7A, you know, obviously, as you said, we have Central Phoenix, um, you have Auburn. Um, you also have uh, Mary G. Montgomery, uh, Dothan, um, Enterprise, and then also, you know, 6A too, which, you know, we don't play any 6A teams except for Clay this year, which is a non-region game. But, you know, for 6A, you got Clay, you got Sarah Land, you got Parker, um, all those really big teams with, you know, really great players that really showcases um, the amount of talent that's in the state. Yeah, and look, Alabama football gave 
Carrollton, you know, hotbed Georgia, a run for its money this past week. So <laughs> we'll talk about that recap in, in a little bit. Uh, but let's stay focused on Thompson in, in the mission at hand, and specifically you. So let's let's kind of steer away from the season and let's talk about the recruiting process. You know, obviously it's still very early in your recruiting process. You've gone on a lot of visits. You've you've talked to a lot of coaches. Are there any schools that kind of stand out? You know, that that just kind of has something that maybe another school doesn't at the early stages right now for you. Um, no, not really. Um, really, the main thing right now for me, you know, I don't really have any front runners or, or top one, three or five schools or anything like that. The main thing is just seeing different places, seeing different schools, um, getting to know different coaches, um, seeing different, you know, offenses and also, you know, different cultures, too. And, and the way those coaches, you know, build their programs. Hey, well, uh, you're going well to, uh, you're going you're going to Alabama, Georgia game this weekend, right? Who you, who you taking? Uh, I'm not. I don't want to take anybody. I just want to watch it. That's a that's a smart answer right there. I think that's going to be a great game for sure. And uh, you know, Georgia kind of struggled a little bit with Kentucky. Alabama's looked good so far this year. So that that'll be a fun game to be at, man. And I respect you not not taking a pick because I know both schools are going to be interested in you. So. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Yeah, look, as a fan, I'm locked in, man. I'm excited. I'm going to actually be live streaming, uh, you know, some football on Saturday. So I'm going to have to have it on the phone. But that's going to be a lot of fun. You enjoy that environment. And, uh, Trent, man, it's been an absolute honor and privilege to have you jump on. And, uh, you know, you're 2027, man. We're going to stay locked in. I'm going to keep following you, and hopefully we'll, we'll get you to jump back on in due time and run this thing back and have another updated conversation as your future unfolds. But until then, stay safe, man. Stay healthy. Best of luck the rest of this season. We definitely appreciate you jumping on, all right? Sir, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.